What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 10th of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, as well as giving my insights on the market right now, we're going to be breaking down some technicals here and before we do get into that guys for everybody out there that finds value in these videos if you enjoy the content find the content helpful feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and I really do appreciate every single one of you guys out there watching this content liking the content subscribing to the channel the community we're building here is absolutely awesome so let's just get right into the topics of today's video I'm excited to record Record today, guys. The S&P 500 ended up going up 13 points today, up 0.47%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up $78 here, up 0.3% at the close. Not as good of a day uh, compared to the S&P 500. And the NASDAQ right now, it's down about $2, but this is the future. Let's see exactly where it did end up closing. And if I do recall correctly, yep, we did see a very significant pullback here uh, towards the pretty much the middle of the day ever since we uh, started... Uh, peaking at this point at 7,500. So let me see um, really quickly here. We closed at about, let's say, actually right about where we are right now. So the NASDAQ closed at about 75. 15 today. So overall today, guys, um, across the U.S. markets, the three major indexes that we follow uh, and, I, and I personally track on this channel, we had a day where we gapped up this morning, the futures were up, we peaked in the middle of the day, and then the market started to taper off from there. So we can see one thing here that I'm seeing on the intraday chart for the SPX is take a look at where we closed, or actually not closed, where we, where we peaked on Friday. Friday. Take a look at the S&P 500 resistance from Friday. It was at about 28, uh, 2885. And take a look today. We got back up into the 2900 level on the S&P, and we leveled, uh, uh, we bottomed out at that resistance. But we're holding it at this point as a new support at 2885, and we ended up closing right above that level of support. So what this is telling me is the S&P could be looking to gap up here tomorrow since it did kind of level up from that resistance, right? You guys kind of see what I'm talking about here. And if we go out to the five day, five minute very quickly, we can see that gap up again, put us on top of that old resistance as a new support at 28.85. And we're riding the 180 SMA very nicely, closing above it um, on this five day, five minute chart. So that's a pretty good sign that the uptrend is still intact here on a shorter term basis for the S&P 500. Let's go over here to the 184 hour chart very quickly. Let's break what I'm seeing down here. So we all know a couple uh, days ago at this point, we ended up holding the 2730 uh, level of support. And from there, that's where we started this ridiculous rally that we've been on in the markets over the past five or six trading days at this point. We started to trade up. We broke the critical resistance at $2,800. We popped above $2,860. And today, we broke another critical resistance at about $2,885 as we cracked into the $2,900 level very briefly. And now we just pulled back. And again, like we saw on the smaller time, Time frame charts. We're simply just holding this level as a new support. So at this point, the next resistance is honestly at the all-time high, or I guess you can say there is one at about 28.15 uh, coming up. And from there, if we break 28.15, if this rally continues, we could be testing uh, yet again, guys, all-time highs, which is crazy because I feel like Literally last week, we were down 6% from where we are right now. But this market, as has as it's been proven over the past couple of months, is extremely volatile, guys. So be careful out there. Uh, do your research before you're hopping into any trades of this market. It, it's You can make a lot of money here, but it is very, very uh, you know dangerous as well. So going over to the NASDAQ here, actually, nope, the Dow. We have to do it in order, guys. We always go S&P, Dow, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, but NASDAQ here ended up closing below 26,200, which is the uh, resistance that we're looking
looking at right now. So we were in the zone and we're still in the zone, the horizontal zone between $25,500 and $26,200. So let's say this rally continues. We break that $26,200 level of resistance, hold it as a new support. We could be trading upwards to $26,400 from there, which is the next resistance at that point. And then if we break there, we're going to be testing the resistance that we got rejected at back towards the end of April at about 26,700. So that's what's going on right now for the Nasdaq on a larger uh, on the larger time frame charts here. Breaking it down a bit on the smaller time frame charts on the 20 day one hour, you guys can clearly see the rejection at that level of 26,200. Very obvious here. And if we go on the one day one minute, you guys will see it even better. Right, literally right at that point we got rejected and slowly started to go down from that level and judging on the five day five minute again just like the S&P 500 typically these trends look similar day in day out between the three major indexes not always but they do look similar hence why you do see this one the Dow looks pretty similar to the S&P it ended up holding above that 180 SMA here uh, as a support and it ended up closing above the level of resistance that we were at the peak we were at on Fridays in Friday's trading session as you guys can see by my cursor here if I drag that out a bit you guys can see how it closed above that level. So that's a pretty good sign, a pretty good bullish sign for uh, the Dow and the S&P 500. Going to the 20-day, you guys can see the crazy reversal that we're seeing here. And that's pretty much it for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The NASDAQ, which has been the hottest one out of the three major indexes, because for all you that don't know, the NASDAQ is a very tech-heavy index. And tech stocks have been on a rally. They've been going crazy crazy over these past couple of days. Apple, Amazon, uh, you know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, these big uh, name tech stocks, Netflix, they've all recovered so strongly, some all upwards of 10, 11% literally in the past week. And if you guys see this movement that we've seen, the uh, NASDAQ's literally gone from $7,000 all the way up to nearly $7,600 um, in the matter of a couple of trading days. And you guys can see that's almost an 8% move. That is not normal guys which is why I'm quite nervous at these levels I'm not buying up like I mentioned in my earlier video today I'm not buying up some of these large cap stocks at this point because I don't want to get caught in a trap I'd rather be cautious and miss out on um, some gains here because I'm viewing more risk at this point than reward uh, for me entering at these high levels um, at this overheated point in, in time in the market in my opinion I'd much rather just wait to see if it cools off and that's honestly what I'm going to be doing if I'm being completely honest with you all so that's um the Nasdaq here you guys can see again the crazy reversal going over to the uh, 184 hour chart we're noticing uh, in yesterday's video, which I actually didn't end up uploading because my microphone malfunctioned, but I did upload it earlier today. I talked about how uh, the NASDAQ was at a level of resistance yesterday. And then we noticed how the futures gapped up and now we're not under that level of resistance anymore, pretty much. Now we're actually breaking out of the 180 SMA, but like I mentioned, markets are very overheated. NASDAQ is very overextended in terms of the RSI. It's very overbought in my opinion tech needs to see a bit of a sell-off here and that's what I'm personally waiting for and guys I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in today's video one of the main catalysts in my opinion that shot up the markets was the deal that Trump came with uh, Mexico the president of Mexico and for those of you guys that don't know Trump slapped tariffs on Mexico starting at 5% and I believe they were supposed to start today on June 10th if they didn't come to an agreement but they they did come to agreement, uh, an agreement, and the tariffs were based on migration due to the illegal immigration of uh, people from Mexico coming into the United States, and they quickly came to an agreement, and if they didn't come to an agreement... Uh, the tariffs, they would have scaled all the way up to 25% by October. So this is definitely a positive catalyst in the markets today, which did 
pop up the futures and which did shoot it up early in the day in my personal opinion. So I'd keep an eye on the $7,500 level for the NASDAQ here. That is a pretty strong resistance and that's pretty much it for this market update portion of today's video. So let's break down what I personally did today. For those of you guys that were watching crude oil, it had a pretty funky move today and I want to talk about that in today's video. So let's go down not to my long-term growth dividend plays. Let's go to my uh, inverse ETFs watch list where I do have the crude oil uh, future here. And you guys can see, and this is another thing that I called out in Sunday's video, but again, I messed up the microphone. I didn't record my audio, so I couldn't upload it to you guys. But I was noticing a resistance under this 50 simple moving average on crude oil. Notice how we got rejected there a couple of weeks ago. We saw that massive sell-off as the markets dumped. We recovered a bit, and we were seeing that same resistance spot that we were at from a couple of weeks ago. So this opened up my eyes to the DWT ETF, which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So let's see some movement here from crude oil um, pretty much during today. So we can see today was June 10th, which is what you're seeing up here. This was earlier in the day uh, before the market even opened uh, in the middle of the night pretty much. Crude oil futures were selling off very slightly, right? Lower lows, lower highs, they were dumping. They had this little run up um, at 11.15 a.m., um, this is about an hour and a half into the market. And this is when we started to see the massive, massive drops, right? This drop right here was absolutely crazy. We consolidated a bit and then we started to dump very aggressively, which is where I actually caught DWT on the second dump. And if you guys see DWT today, you saw... Uh, you're going to see some crazy bull moves here in the matter of a snap of a finger. And I was really lucky at this point, guys, because up to this point, I didn't make any trades. I was watching the market. We saw how the market was selling off a bit. So it was kind of a weird position for me at that point. So I didn't want to hop in. I, 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 you know, I preferred sitting on cash all the way up till this point. And then I was watching crude oil again because I talked about it in my video earlier today. So I was keeping it on my, uh, keeping it on, uh, uh, my watch list and in my eyes so I can see any potential moves and that's when we saw that big dump I took advantage of that I didn't catch it at the complete bottom but as we started to spike up aggressively and as we broke out of 860 which is the resistance um, from the previous little dump you know that's when I took my long position on DWT very quick in and out guys literally from 862 up to about I believe this resistance level once we broke out of that or once it broke out of that, that's when I ended up taking my profits, which was about a 1.1, 1.2% profit. So it was a slow start to the morning, but then DWT busted this crazy move, which I think is actually setting up a nice play for tomorrow. So let's just hop right into the portion of the video where I talk about what I'm watching in terms of stocks and ETF for the next day. So DWT here, again, like we said, it's pulled back very nicely due to crude oil recovering a bit from the massive sell-off that it saw. It went from $10 all the way down to $820, and now it's holding this 50 SMA nicely. Very nicely. Clear bounce here. Now we just need to see a further push. In tomorrow's session, if we notice how... Um, its pre-market session is doing. If it's gapping up a bit, if crude oil is dropping, let's say, into the 52 level from this 53.31 level that it's currently at, that would be a very good sign that DWT might run again tomorrow, which is what I'm personally um, waiting on here. I just think it's setting up very, very nicely. And if we're looking here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, you guys can see it even better. And if we break out of this 50 SMA here, I think that's going to be a confirming point to get into DWT, guys, to be quite honest. So that's what I'm looking at here in terms of DWT, and we can already see the reversals happening. We're noticing on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five it's breaking out of the 180 SMA. It's breaking out of the 50 SMA as well. We're noticing a bullish cross, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA here. Uh, very, very nice, guys. Very, very nice for a reversal here on um, DWT. So 
A couple of other ones that I'm personally watching, like I said, you know, markets are very overheated. So in times like this, when markets are overextended, they're overbought on the RSI. I never think it's a bad idea to just watch these market ETFs that I have here. This is a watch list, especially in volatile times that I'm always keeping on deck. I'm always watching these ones throughout the day because they move very quickly when the markets see, see these volatile times, right? And let me show you guys two of my favorite ones that I'm watching watching right now. And for everybody that watches me every day, you probably see that I talk about these every single day because on these videos, I'm 100% honest with you guys and what I watch. And I watch a lot of the same stuff, a lot of the same ticker symbols every single day. I'm not one of these guys scanning for stocks every single day, trying to find these penny stocks, these small cap stocks. That's not what I talk about on this channel, really. That's not what I personally do in terms of trading. Not that it's bad to do that because that's a very good thing to do as well. But me, I stick to more... Uh, Similar ETFs all the time. That's what I've found to work for me. So SQQQ is a NASDAQ 100 ETF. It goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. So if the overheated tech stocks, NASDAQ starts to fall, this one breaks out of the 180 SMA. That's my confirming factor here to buy some SQQQ and trade it as I do think it's very, very oversold at this point, guys. Very oversold. Take a look at the RSI. That's absolutely crazy. Crazy. Seems like we did dip a little bit below the 180 SMA here, which is a bit alarming. That's not too good of a sign here. But tomorrow, if we do start to pop out of that level again and hold it as a new support, that's going to be pretty promising in my opinion. But until we break out of this level of resistance, guys, until I see a significant market dump, I'm not looking to trade SQQQ. But again, I'm just I'm just keeping it on my watch list. It never hurts, right? So SPXS is a another ETF. This one is very similar to the SQQQ one, but it trades based on the S&P 500. So whenever the S&P is selling off, SPXS is going up at a 3x rate. So SP, SPX, the S&P 500, it sells off maybe two points or two percent rather this one's going to go up six percent in that scenario. So this one Although it did, just like the SQQQ ETF, it did break the 180 SMA support. It's still worth watching in my personal opinion. So those are two ETFs that I'm watching. Let's just run down through these tech stocks very quickly, guys, so you can see how overbought and overheated they are. So at this point, Apple here is under the 180 SMA and under a resistance at about 195, where we actually got topped off at today. We're also very overbought. RSI is reading 76. Take a look at Amazon now. Amazon is very overbought as well. We're under that 180 SMA resistance, and it seems like we're actually getting rejected there as well due to today's price action. Take a look at this one day, one minute, guys. Take a look at that. We sold off, or rather got rejected at this point in time, and then plateaued for the rest of the day. We saw a little dump here. I don't know what that's from, but... These look like they want to dump, to be completely honest with you all. Based off my just brief looking at them, uh, uh, this brief technical analysis, right? So Facebook, very similar. It's under moving average resistance. It's approaching overbought status, right? Google, it's probably same exactly. Now it's reaching a level where it's under the 50 SMA support, uh, resistance rather. We we got all the way down to $1,000, guys. Oh my God, I didn't realize how low Disney's been... Or uh, Google's been getting here. But if we break a thousand and get into the 900 level, I might have to consider a long term position on Google. That might be a cool spot or a good spot rather to start a position because this is one that I've always wanted to add. I've never honestly owned Google stock. That would be pretty cool. And maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. That would be kind of fun. So that's kind of the performance right now of these main um, tech stocks. Some other ones that I'm watching very quickly, guys. You you know, Tesla, of course, I'm watching Tesla it went up 4% today, another $8. If we break out of the 180 SMA here, that's going to be a pretty good play, but I don't know if that's going to happen, guys. Tesla is very overheated at this point, much in need of a pullback. So those are a couple, you know, obviously I'm going to be watching, you know, drip here. If it breaks out into the 15, 16 level, that's going to be a huge breakout there. If crude oil dumps, that most likely will happen. The 
gold ETFs, natural gas, just a bunch of the usual guys. So that's kind of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it really supports me and I do appreciate every single one of you out there that's doing that, supporting the channel. It really does mean the world to me. If you like the content and you want to see further content from me, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on anything right now. Markets, stocks, what you're watching, what you're trading. I would love to know. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck tomorrow. Peace out.